Hello my friends, and welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time viewing this, well I'm sorry for disappointing you and it's not another battle report or reading. Those will be coming on a little bit later down this week. I've been having a rough time this last past week, but I've gotten over it. Also, I hope you like the new um, character profile. But today we're talking about I am a war gamer. How did I get into 40k? Well, it's a long and drawn out process, but it started off with some PC games here and there, you know, Star Wars Battlefront 2, a classic right there. One of the first games I started playing as a first person shooter. Beautiful. And then I started getting into more refined ones, such as Battlefield 2. Another classic that not a lot of people remember. And then, Dawn of War, Dark Crusade. Of course I had the other ones, but this one's the most influential because it came with the Necrons. And that always brings me back to this one great game where I was on one side and another person was on the other side of the battle. And I just kept tossing conscripts and, well not conscripts, it was uh, just standard troopers his way. Artillery, tanks, and all the rest, but that doesn't really describe or tell you how I got into being an Imperial Fist fan. Why that Legion out of all of them? Why Rogel Dorn as my favorite Primarch? Why? Why any of this? Why not the Ultramarines or Raven Guards, Salamanders, you know, all the others? I don't mind the cape, I'm still working on it. I tried to give it like a fancy floral pattern or whatever. Well, the reason why I chose Imperial Fist was because of another game. Uh, Space Marine. I was playing the multiplayer and, well, I got kind of tired of seeing Rainbow Warriors and uh, pink... Ultramarines and white black Templars and then there was a whole bunch of other custom chapters that was even part of a custom chapter for a bit but I didn't like their lore it was kind of boring honestly so I decided to come up with well what's my favorite weapon in the game I like using the bolter with the crack rounds and the bolter targeter so I decided to go with, well, what in what in Space Marine Army likes to use a whole bunch of bolters? <laughs> I like to play a lot of defensive versions of the game, and when something's still going down later on, or something bad happens and everyone's calling for help, <laughs> excuse me, I would run over and siege the well, blockade or whatever that was going on. And well, I landed on an Imperial Fist. Siege Masters, defensive strategies, and bolter experts. Also, they were yellow. They were different. It was different than everything else I've seen on the table and, well, in the games. I started finding more stuff about them. I saw, I found a few videos here and there, not that many. And, well, it just happened. It, they weren't my first tabletop army, by the way. That would be Cadian Guard. Or Ostromir Town, as they're called now. But, you know, thing, things change, you know. Uh, seventh edition wasn't really the greatest time to be an Imperial Guard player or an Orc player because those were my two army choices that I picked up at the time because I liked the lore and I liked the way they speak in Dawn of War. You know, because the Orcs have their... And that is honestly why I like them. They're crazy, they're weird, they're strange. Cheeky little zoggers. But that's not the point. 
The Imperial Fist are my mainline army now, thanks to, well, 8th and 9th edition being mainly Space Marine-centric games. And I wouldn't say that's the best thing. It really isn't the best at all. Well, that, that's a new guy. I'm still working on him. We're going to do a, a beautiful base for him. It'll be done later, though. You'll see it in another battle report later on. But I didn't stop after Imperial Fist. I also have, well, other armies that I'm starting up right now. A few of you may have noticed that I'm starting a Black Templar's army. You know, something on the side. You know, a little fluffy list. And this is all I have for them so far. Not much, but it will work. Some captains or veterans, if you will. I'm going to mainly use them as veterans, because that's what they are good for. <coughs> and then we got a uh, Empress Champion, who did beautifully last game. Slaughtered a lot of enemies in the name of the Emperor. A banner holder that really didn't do that much. A captain that didn't do that much, but that's what captains do in 9th and 8th edition. Another sword brother. Another sword brother. And then standard foot sloggers. I mean, infantry. <clears throat> October is coming up next, so I gotta think of something for that. You'll find out later. But, I have other armies as well. I have the Death Corpse of Krieg. Some beautifully modeled models, but they cost an arm and a leg. So I don't think I'll be buying anymore. And at the time of recording this video, a lot of stuff from Forge World is gone. Like, a lot of it is just gone from their website. You can't really buy that much stuff with the Death Corps of Krieg. Grenaders are missing still, and they've, they've been missing for the longest time now, so... Hopefully, we get <laughs> something, you know? And then I also have Chaos as another army, you know? World Eaters and uh, Word Bearers. Now, the word bearers started off as, like, a funny side thing, you know, for a campaign I was running. And, well, slowly but surely, they started becoming one of my mainline chaos factions because it allowed me to be evil. And I didn't have to be apologetic about it. I could waltz over with my sorcerer and turn your warlord into a chaos spawn and laugh. I could do horrible, monstrous things, such as summoning demons from the warp, and, well, just being evil. I could use a whole different list that no one else is using, a whole bunch of spawn, a whole bunch of demons, and, you know, the dark and spooky stuff of the warp. The, the fun stuff, the stuff you can't really do with, well, world eaters, because world eaters are just... Um, just like, well, these guys. And the orcs. They're another level of fun when it comes to the tabletop. You have a whole bunch of random things here and there. You have random stuff that happens. You could be as fun and crazy as you want with a list, and you can still have fun. Unless you're playing a Space Marine player, but that's neither here nor there. Well, here we are at the end, where we're talking about Orktober, and... I have a plan, and it won't be a crowdfunder or anything like that, but it will be helping me with my war efforts on the tabletop. Because I have my eye set on a few new models, but that will be explained later in another video. I'm going to show off my girlfriend's army. This is the most recently thing I painted for her. You know, showing off my skills, why not? The uh, Sisters of Battle, Bloody Rose. She chose the army on her own, and like you've seen in another video, she's really good at using them, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm a better painter than I am playing as sisters. 
She knows how to use them properly. It is her army, after all. But I am a painter, and I love to paint. The holes in the back of this are filled, but that works, especially since I've actually seen a few of these in real life, and I know what those actually look like, especially with how many churches I've been forced to go into. Well, I wouldn't say forced, because a lot of them have just been funerals. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, this is the end of the video. It's a short one. I hope you made it to here. And I just want to let you know that... Thank you for enjoying my content, viewing my stuff, and leaving a like and maybe a comment now and then. Each and every single one of you are beautiful and amazing people. And I thank you. And I hope you have an amazing day today. Goodbye.